I'll start in now, now working session number seven on um, tolerance and non-discrimination, including equality of opportunity for women and men and the implementation of the OSCE action plan for the promotion of gender equality. Four decades ago, the OSCE participating states started to discuss how to advance gender equality. In the Helsinki Final Act, OSCE participating states recognize that full and true equality between men and women is a fundamental aspect of a just and democratic society. In Vienna in 1989, participating states confirmed their determination to ensure equal rights of men and women by taking all measures necessary, including legislative measures, to promote equally effective participation of women and men in political, economical, social and cultural life. This year marks the 10th anniversary of the adoption of the 2004 OSCE Action Plan for the Promotion of Gender Equality, as well as the 5th anniversary of the 2009 Ministerial Council decision on women's um, participation in political and public life. This is a good time for us to assess progress, celebrate our achievements, but also the time to acknowledge remaining challenges and discuss how we can better address them in the future. I am pleased to note some positive trends in the quest for gender equality in OSCE participating states. Women's representation in political and public institutions is slowly increasing across the OSCE region. Elections in several participating states in the past years have resulted in increases in the share of women taking up seats in national legislatures. Legislative and policy frameworks in the OSCE participating states are being adopted or revised to guarantee equal rights of for all citizens, women and men alike. Yet, still too often, the equality on paper does not translate into real equality where women and men are able to exercise their rights on equal footing. In many OSCE participating states, women continue to be underrepresented in the three branches of government, particularly in decision-making positions. In the security sector, women are still in the minority both in lower and higher ranks. While some progress has been made in amending or altogether repealing policies that limit women's access to all positions in certain sectors, such as the military, a great deal remains to be done to change mindsets about women's roles in providing security and keeping the peace for all citizens alongside, alongside their male counterparts. Across the OSC region, women's rights continue to be undermined in the name of political expediency, tradition or economic necessity. Democracy refers to the rule of people, rule of all citizens, women and men. Yet, women make up only about 20% of parliamentarians in the OSCE region. Trends in women's political participation in the region point to unsatisfactory progress towards gender parity in politics. With the 20th anniversary of the adoption of the Beijing Platform for Action coming up next year, it appears that more than 70% of OSC participating states will fail to reach a minimum 30% benchmark for women's representation in the decision making. In line with its mandate, ODIR continues to implement programs that aim to enhance women's participation in all aspects of democratic governance and in the security sector. It also continues its strong track record of training security sector actors on how to recruit, tra retrain, train and retain and promote women through ranks and how to serve the public in a gen gender sensitive manner. As gatekeepers, uh, gatekeepers of democracy, political parties have a special role in ensuring that women and men are able to access elected office. Those of you who attended this morning event would know that we have recently published a handbook on promoting women's participation in political parties and we hope that the handbook, along with other valuable tools and experiences, will motivate political party leaders and other relevant actors to work towards gender parity. Let me stress that gender inequality and gender-based discrimination allow and facilitate violence against women and domestic violence, especially against uh, women belonging to vulnerable groups. In this regard, I would like to thank the Swiss Chairmanship for dedicating a special day tomorrow to discuss these issues. In addition to urging participating states to advance gender equality, we must also look at ourselves and assess 
how we can improve gender mainstreaming within the OSCE. And this brings me back to my initial comments on the importance of continuously evaluating and assessing what we have done to protect and promote women's rights and gender equality, what the results were, where we want to go, and who is responsible. I hope this session today will help us to advance in that discussion and bring some responses. To open the discussion on such important issues, I'm very pleased that we are joined today as our introducer this afternoon by Honorable Member of Parliament, Wanda Nowitschka, Deputy Speaker of the Polish uh, Sejm. She has been an activist in the field of women's rights and health, human rights and particularly sexual and reproductive health and rights for many years. She is a co-founding member of the Federation for Women and, planning, and Family Planning as well as founding member of ASTRA, the Central and Eastern European Women's Network for Sexual and Reproductive Health and Rights. From 1996 to 2002, she served as a member of the Gender Advisory Panel on the WHO's Development and Research Training in Human Rights Reproduction Program, and since 2003, she has been a member of the Advisory Board of Reproductive Health Matters. In 2008, Ms. Novichka was granted the University in Exile Award by the new school, the University in New York, in recognition of the engagement in the struggle for women's reproductive rights, both in Poland and in the international arena. And it is also with great, great pleasure that I extend a warm welcome to our moderator, Ambassador Miroslava Beham, the Senior Advisor on Gender Issues of the OSCE. She started her diplomatic career when she joined the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Serbia and Montenegro in March 2005. She was appointed Deputy Head of the Mission to the OSCE and other international organizations in Vienna in July 2005, and later on was appointed Ambassador and Permanent Representative of Serbia to the OSCE and other international organizations in Vienna and stayed in this post until December 2011, when she took up her current functions. From 1983 until she joined Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ms. Beham worked as a freelance author, literary critic, and political journalist, journalist for a variety of German media, publishing houses, and the Serbian news magazine NIN. She was visiting lecturer at the German School for Journalism and the Ludwig Maximilian University. As a journalist, and as a researcher, Ms. Behan has been dealing with gender and peace issues throughout all her professional career. With this, I would like to give the floor to Ambassador Behan to help us moderate this session. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Beatrice, also for this very kind introduction. Um, maybe, uh, yeah, I say good afternoon once more to everybody. Um, I will give some technical uh, in introductions before I have the pleasure to give the floor to our introducer. So I may re remind you that the speakers list is at the back of, of the head table, which means behind me, uh, where participants have to sign up if they would like to take the floor. Uh, we will have a limited speaking time, which we still don't know how much will be allotted. Uh, it depends on, on the length of the speaker's list. Um, of course, um, I would like to invite you to keep your comments brief and to the point. Um, we, you can also ask questions, and we would very much prefer um, if you would not read out statements, but um, uh, afraid um, that this will not be the case um, <clears throat> this afternoon. But still, so I would like to discourage you uh, from reading out prepared statements. And now it is my great pleasure and honor um, to give uh, the floor to uh, Ms. Nowitzka, who was already introduced by uh, the Deputy Director of ODIR. Um, I had the opportunity to talk to her a little bit before this session, and um, I uh, recognized a very committed um, gender champion in her. So it's a great pleasure to have you here. You have the floor, Madam. Thank you, <coughs> Madam Chairs, uh, distinguished guests and delegates. Uh, uh, it is a great honor and a pleasure 
to address you today on this, the issue of great importance such as gender equality and equal opportunities for men and women. Uh, before I make some comments, uh, let me greet you uh, uh, wholeheartedly on behalf of the Polish Parliament here in Poland. Uh, I hope uh, you are having great discussions uh, and they are going to be very fruitful and the results will have an impact on policies of all countries in Europe, including Poland. And also before starting, I, let me just to con uh, um, contextualize uh, um, the moment in which your discussions are taking place, because now we are in session in Parliament, uh, uh, and this is m that may be the reason I will have to leave earlier, uh, because I, um, I have some um, uh, duties uh, related to the session. However, what is happening at this very session has very important uh, for women's rights. Uh, we are discussing the uh, ratification, uh, the law Ratifi um, which will ratify the European Convention Against Violence. Uh, um, I hope we will manage to do this, although we have opposition against that, b believe me or not, but it, we do have. Uh, but if we have, that will be a great, uh, great opportunity and a great change for many women who are waiting for this important uh, document. Uh, also, uh, speaking of women in high position, uh, it is probably um, um, relevant to mention that we are having a prime female pr prime minister for a couple of days, uh, and this is our second female prime minister in uh, in uh, 20 uh, year 25 years of democratic society. So, um, and in government we have six women. It's not what we will dream about, but certainly. It it is a progress. Uh, so as I mentioned in the beginning, the gender equality and equal opportunities uh, have been recognized as milestones of sustainable development, social justice, and human rights principles. And m numerous institutions like, like OECE uh, have uh, adopted a number of policies and programs aimed at full implementation of equality between men and women. Um, I would like to congratulate OSCE on their plan of action. I um, hope you will, you will be able to successfully implement this uh, um, for, our good, for the benefit of women in, in many countries of uh, uh, Europe. Um, as you mentioned before, it is also worthy remembered that now the United Nations is undergoing the process of uh, uh, evaluating what has been achieved uh, since 20 years uh, when in Beijing in 1995 uh, women from all over the world together with their governments met to, um, to work on the global program of action, platform for action, uh, uh, to um, improve the situation of women in 12 areas of concern. I just mentioned uh, a couple of them, so, so political life, that's certainly one of the important uh, um, aspects where gender equality is still not achieved, uh, um, economic, um, uh, economic uh, uh, discrimination in different various forms, uh, uh, women's health, uh, including reproductive health and rights, uh, violence against uh, women, access to education, all these areas uh, still have been addressed in the platform for action and in many other institutions and documents as I mentioned um, and still as we know uh, while some achievements have been made still we have long way to go before gender equality will become a fact uh, in, re uh, in reality not only in paper as it has been mentioned, uh, um, uh, political participation of women uh, still is not satisfactory. In Poland, uh, uh, for example, we have 24% uh, 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 in uh, Sejm, which is the uh, uh, main chamber of parliament, and uh, in Senate, 13%. 
So uh, that shows that we still um, are not uh, that far in, um, uh, in this process. Uh, uh, so, um, what are the national policies that have been undertaken at the national uh, level? So, uh, certainly one of those are institutional gender equality mechanisms, um, which are in, in most of the countries. Um, however, they are not strong enough in order to have a significant impact on the situation of women. Um, I don't know how it is in, in other countries, but in Poland, uh, we have a um, government plenipotentiary for equal treatment, uh, which unfortunately does not have a, a legislative initiative, which doesn't have a, a, a big budget, and of course, this is not constitutional office, which means that it's very impacted by the political uh, situation in the country. Once the government with more conser conservative approach is coming, then this office uh, is, uh, um, is changed according to the, uh, to the pr priorities of, of the given government. So this is certainly the area where um, all who care uh, about gender equality should work stronger. Uh, um, s s secondly, uh, uh, gender mainstreaming strategies. They also have been adopted in Beijing, in, in your documents, and many others. However, uh, if we look from the experience of po political decision making, I can assure you that very, uh, in very few places, uh, um, certainly in my part of the world, I'm not speaking, uh, speaking more about Eastern Europe, where policies and uh, policies are not taken by the government are viewed and verified and checked uh, from the perspective of gender equality. So we have gender mainstreaming policies on paper, but in terms of actual legislative processes, it's not reality in many places. As to numbers of women in different positions, as it has been said before, we are not, uh, uh, the situation is not good neither in elective bodies, nor in, uh, in uh, uh, other institutions uh, uh, appointing bodies, which appoint uh, people. And this is really a shame, because w women in Europe, and actually it's the process is more global, are better educated than men. They have higher education. So if you look at the experience women have, they should, have, uh, um, uh, they should have positions which, are, um, which reflect their, pre pre their uh, preparation for, for, uh, for decision making. Uh, and, uh, and even uh, symbolically, if you look at the European Union as an as a institution, a forum where, uh, which has gender equality um, installed in all, in all documents and, uh, and, pro uh, and policies, uh, when we look at the picture of leaders of the European Union, we see only men and Angela Merkel um, as only women in, in this body. So that shows that still, still um, some, in symbolic way, that's uh, who is m taking decisions in, in, in our region. Um, then another mechanism. Uh, which, uh, uh, which is being used, uh, and we have it in Poland. These are quota laws uh, uh, in election, uh, that can be used in elections. We have a quota of 35%, uh, and uh, as you can hear, we didn't do well enough having this mechanism for the first time, that's true, but still it was not uh, that successful um, because, it was n because it turned out not to be strong. So women's groups in Poland are, are advocating for parity um, law, and we have it law which is pending in parliament which introduces zipper mechanism. But unfortunately, uh, it's waiting and waiting for the time of being finally um, discussed. I hope we will manage to, uh, 
adopt this law before the end of the session, before the, uh, uh, before the end of the term, but uh, we will see. But this is another, another mechanism that, and, uh, that should be discussed and some common policies, uh, European, global, should be undertaken. So, just giving so from this uh, a couple of comments um, I'm making, I think that uh, it can be easily uh, seen that while there has been um, there has been uh, institutions, there have been uh, there have been uh, programs, policies, commitments, and even uh, some uh, some some obligations of the states in promoting gender equality uh, in all spheres of life, still um, a lot um, has not been achieved yet, and a lot needs, uh, um, needs to be done. Uh, we need a lot of political will uh, so that these mechanisms, uh, mechanisms have been properly and efficiently used. And, uh, um, and that before that, uh, without that, uh, the change will not happen as, uh, as quickly as we would like to. So I hope that today's discussion of, uh, um, of um, our afternoon session will be this drop uh, in the process of uh, changing our policies um, um, in our countries and also regionally and globally so women and men could equally together work towards a better future. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Nowitzka, for this um, strong and powerful, actually, introduction. And I think you put your finger into the right wounds <laughs> that we all have, all our societies. Um, and I'm uh, always thrilled to hear, um, to share experience that uh, participating states share with us their experiences, because it helps others um, to think about it and, and rethink their own policies and strategies. Um, now we, I would like to open the floor for, for discussions. Um, we have a speaker's list um, and a time allotted for each speaker, which is three, three and a half minutes. You won't believe it, it's three minutes 30. <laughs> um, and the speaker's list is still open um, for, for uh, registration. So um, the first speaker, I give the floor to is Finland on behalf of the EU to be followed by the United States. Finland, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Moderator. I am honored to speak on behalf of the European Union and its member states. This statement is also on behalf of Albania, Andorra, Bosnia and Herzegovina, former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, Georgia, Liechtenstein, Monaco, Montenegro, Moldova, Norway, and Ukraine. Please note that this list of aligned states is not final. The full list of aligned states will be provided on the written version of this statement. Madam Moderator, gender equality is an essential element of a democratic society. It is one of the founding values of the European Union and a fundamental right reflected in the EU Charter of Fundamental Rights. We therefore strongly support efforts to advance gender equality within the OSCE area and beyond. The OSCE, as a regional security organization, and with its comprehensive concept of security, is in a unique position to advance gender equality. We believe the 10th anniversary of the OSCE Action Plan for the Promotion of Gender Equality provides us with an excellent opportunity to actively seek ways to further strengthen our work towards achieving gender equality. We would like to take this opportunity to thank the Swiss Chairmanship, ODIA, and the OSCE Secretariat for convening the Gender Equality Review Conference in Vienna in July. The conference allowed us to take stock of our efforts in implementing the action plan, including identifying gaps in the implementation, as well as seeking new ways forward. The OSC Action Plan for Gender Equality highlights the importance of implementing the UN Security Council Resolution 1325 
on women, peace and security, and related resolutions, which remain highly relevant. We are convinced uh, that the UNSCR 1325 needs to be implemented in a holistic and comprehensive manner. We therefore support the development of an OSCE-wide action plan on women, peace and security. Another important focus area outlined in the action plan is advancing the political participation of women in the participating states. Much remains to be done to ensure the equal participation of women in democratic processes. We wish to highlight that OSC commitments inter alia call on the participating states to consider legislative measures to facilitate a more balanced participation of women and men in political and public life and decision making. Particular attention needs to be paid to vulnerable groups such as Roma and Sinti women and girls, women and girls belonging to indigenous peoples, women and girls with disabilities, and LGBTI persons who often face multiple forms of discrimination. We commend the work of ODEA and other relevant OSC structures in advancing the political participation of women and we encourage further efforts in this regard. We would also like to recall the importance of combating and eradicating all forms of violence against women, a topic that will be discussed in more detail tomorrow. Violence against women is the most widespread human rights violation of our time. We look forward to actively working further in the OSCE to enhance our common efforts to eradicate violence against women. The Gender Equality Review Conference uh, highlighted the need to ensure a strong and sustainable institutionalization of gender issues in the work of the OSCE. We thank the current and incoming chairmanships for their related conclusions in this regard. We stand ready to actively in work to ensure that the gender perspective is integrated in the policy, planning and decision-making processes, as well as in the programmatic work of the OSC from the beginning. Finally, we would like to present the following recommendations to the OSCE and to the participating states. Number one, improve through concrete measures the implementation of the OSCE Gender Action Plan and report on the progress made. Number two, ensure a strong and sustainable institutionalization of gender issues in the OSCE, including by facilitating a gender equality network of the part participating states, convening regular gender equality review conferences, and taking all necessary measures to ensure that the gender perspective is integrated and mainstreamed in the policy and operational work of the OSCE. Number three, enhance efforts to adopt an OSCE-wide action plan on women, peace and security. Finally, we encourage participating states to introduce measures that will result in increased representation of women in political and public life and as relevant to seek support from ODIA and other OSC structures in this regard. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I forgot to say that I will be strict in lim <laughs> limiting the time of the speakers. Um, so um, I want to give the floor now to the United States to be followed by Turkey. And I would also like to encourage you to focus more on the recommendations that you have to give um, or shared um, <clears throat> or share experience with us uh, than um, <clears throat> on extensive uh, statements that would not cover really uh, concrete issues. So United States, please, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Um, we also welcome the opportunity on this occasion of the 10th anniversary of the OSC Action Plan to take a look at our commitments and the progress we've achieved and the work that still has to be done. Earlier this week in New York, Secretary Kerry convened the fifth high-level meeting of the Equal Futures Partnership. And this Equal Futures Partnership was um, a challenge that President Obama sort of set out to world leaders in 2011, but it has grown into uh, a multinational effort to rally commitments worldwide to promote gender equality, and we were pleased to see the group grow this year to 27 countries, uh, 10 of which, uh, in addition to the United States, are OSCE participating states. 
And at that meeting, Secretary Kerry pointed out that we're partners for an equal future, not simply because equality is uh, a moral imperative or a security imperative or an economic imperative, though it is all three of those things. Um, but it's because women's progress is human progress. And we know that no society can succeed uh, if half of its population is left behind. And in fact, we also know that when women and girls are empowered, educated, and equipped to contribute to society, um, societies become more prosperous, more stable, and secure. GDP goes up, institutions are stronger, laws are better. Um, to make that happen, obviously, access to quality education for girls is foremost and critical. Um, but when women and girls get to the workplace, those workplaces have to be free of discrimination and sexual harassment. Several OSCE participating states still lack specific laws um, addressing sexual harassment, particularly in the workplace. Um, and these include Armenia, Belarus, Georgia, Russia, Turkmenistan, and Uzbekistan, as well as Kosovo. Um, in Kyrgyzstan, legislation prohibits physical assault, but not verbal harassment. And even in countries where legislation exists, it's not always properly enforced. Um, turning to the importance of women in, in political life, this is absolutely essential, again, to have the kinds of laws and institutions that we need. And in, in this respect, I'd like to, um, to cite Odir's uh, report on, on women in elected office, as well as the new handbook for advancing uh, women's pol political participation. Uh, we know that it's absolutely critical for women to participate in the political process, not just as candidates, but in, in the campaigns, in the administration of elections, and as voters. Uh, the November 20, uh, 2013 presidential elections in Tajikistan marked a welcome increase in women's participation in the electoral administration, uh, but we do note that women were significantly underrepresented in electoral commissions at all levels. And while family voting was widespread, it was often to the detriment of women voters. Turning to political participation um, at the top, uh, and here the United States, uh, among some other OSC participating states, has a lot of work to do. Uh, women need to be uh, in those t top senior levels and at every level, and when women are excluded from power, we all suffer as societies. Um, we are encouraged that ODIR and the OSC Parliamentary Assembly reports indicate that there is a positive trend among OSC participating states, and I certainly hope that the United States follows that trend soon. I also want to note um, uh, the progress that has made within the OSCE personnel system in the last 10 years. Again, although there are still some gaps at the senior levels that we'd like to see addressed, uh, we would urge all participating states to ensure that their recruiting strategies prioritize diversity and inclusion with respect to gender. I want to recognize the work of the OSCE institutions and field presidents presences that are helping participating states implement their commitments to ensure equality of opportunity. And in particular, note the important work that's being done by the Women's Resource Centers supported by the offices in Tajikistan, Armenia, and Azerbaijan. We believe that these could serve as models in other countries. Uh, we welcome the, the strengthening of the gender focal points uh, throughout the OSCE, and we believe this should continue. To conclude, I just want to take the opportunity to express our support to the OSC Special Advisor for Gender Issues, as well as the Special Representative of the OSC uh, Chairmanship for Gender Issues, and note that we're going to continue to support you to keep the focus on equal opportunity where it belongs. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, <clears throat> um, and thank you for your statement. The next speaker is Turkey, to be followed by Norway. Turkey, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Women make vital contributions to every conceivable aspect of societal life, and Turkey is fully committed to the goals of improving the living standards and rights of women, ensuring their full and equal participation in all spheres of life, and strengthening their status in society. We therefore attach great importance to the work being done in these areas in various international fora, including the OSC. We believe that inc increased action is necessary, particularly in areas such as preventing violence against women, promoting political participation, and economic empowerment. Violence against women, which will be taken up in more detail tomorrow, continues to be a formidable obstacle to the achievement of gender equality. In keeping with our policy of zero tolerance for violence against women, Turkey was the first country to sign and to ratify the Istanbul Convention. Subsequently, our parliament adopted a new law in 2012, transposing the provisions of the convention into our national legislation. Madam Moderator, the year 2014 marks the 10th anniversary of the OSCE Action Plan for the Promotion of Gender Equality. 
By applying our comprehensive security approach to gender equality, the action plan calls for the implementation of our relevant commitments across all three dimensions of security and places our organization at the forefront of the international efforts aimed at increasing women's participation in all walks of life. In this context, the Gender Review Conference held in July presented us with a valuable opportunity to discuss ways of further strengthening the OSC's toolbox in this regard. Let me also take this opportunity to express our support for the addendum to the Gender Action Plan proposed by the Swiss Chairmanship. We cannot deny, however, that the OSC can do more, especially when we bear in mind that the United Nations framework continues to evolve. That this, in fact, is precisely the reasoning behind the draft OSC-wide action plan on women, peace, and security co-sponsored by Austria, Finland, Kazakhstan, and Turkey. We strongly believe that we need to empower women in all phases of the conflict cycle. We continue to hope that the broad support of participating states will soon translate itself to an action plan adopted by all. We should not forget that not one among the 57 participating states can boast of a perfect record when it comes to the promotion of women's rights. We must make all progress, we must all make progress in empowering women. In order to do so, we must equip our organization with strength and tools to more effectively support our national efforts. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, the next speaker is Norway, to be followed by the Russian Federation. Norway, you have the floor, madam. Uh, thank you, madam moderator. Uh, Norway has aligned with the statement made by Finland on behalf of the European Union. However, in my national capacity, I would briefly like to add the following three points. Firstly, Norway has over time strived to achieve gender equality in the sense of equal rights, equal opportunities, and equal obligations. Last year, the Norwegian Parliament decided to make our compulsory military service gender neutral from 2015. Women will have an equal right and obligation to do one year of military service. Secondly, the government is currently preparing a new white paper on gender equality. The white paper will focus on increasing the percentage of female top leaders, women and the economy, women's health, gender-based violence, balance between family life and work, and inclusion of migrants. The, the white paper will underline the importance of freedom of choice and flexibility. No new quotas will be introduced to achieve these aims. However, the quotas that have been applied in certain circumstances have certainly been a useful tool in a period of transition to improve gender equality. Thirdly, Norway welcomes the Swiss, Swiss Chairmanship's proposal for a decision on an addendum to the 2004 Gender Action Plan for the Promotion of Gender Equality. We believe issues addressed in the proposal will be important to agree on, as, for example, the establishment of a gender equality network consisting of national experts, gender focal points in each OSCE structure, increased co coordination and cooperation with other regional and international organizations on gender equality, reorganizing the current gender advisor position to a gender representative who will be an integral part of the OSCE Secretariat, report directly to the Secretary General, and be a member of all senior OSCE Secretariat decision-making bodies. And finally, to enhance gender mainstreaming in the conflict cycle. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Thank you very much. The next speaker on my list is the Russian Federation, to be followed by Public Union Labris. Спасибо, господа председатель. Уважаемые участники заседания, обеспечение равенства между мужчинами и женщинами, а также улучшение положения женщин остаются в числе важных приоритетов в ОБСЕ. Причем речь должна идти именно о равных возможностях для мужчин и женщин, а не о квотировании, которое может эффективно применяться только в странах на начальном этапе развития демократии. В ОБСЕ практически во всех государствах создана достаточная правовая база для обеспечения гендерного равенства. И речь сейчас нужно вести о совершенствовании инструментов их практической реализации. Основной акцент в развитых странах должен делаться на повышении профессионализма мужчин и женщин и их конкурентоспособности. Доступ к получению качественного образования имеет здесь важнейшее значение. Немаловажна также работа по профессиональной и социальной ориентации молодежи. Например, в образовательной программе российских школ включен учебный курс по профессиональной ориентации. Успешно работают психологи, помогающие с выбором не только профессии, но и социальной роли. 
Незаслуженно забыты в ОБСЕ вопросы обеспечения прав тех женщин и мужчин, которые выбирают семейные приоритеты и воспитание детей в качестве основной и главной цели и основного, основного рода занятия. Такие люди должны получать государственную поддержку, прежде всего, связанную с воспитанием детей, возможности участия в общественной и культурной жизни, получения образования или профессиональной переподготовки. Нужно включать эти вопросы в повестку дня гуманитарных мероприятий ОБСЕ. В нашей стране подобные программы реализуются при поддержке Министерства образования и науки и Министерства труда России. Например, молодые матери, не получившие высшего образования, могут в рамках пилотного проекта на бесплатной основе пройти годичные подготовительные курсы для поступления в ВУЗы. И мужчины, и женщины на равных условиях могут получить оплачиваемый отпуск по уходу за ребенком до достижения им трехлетнего возраста, сохранения места работы и должности. Кстати, в нашей стране даже бабушки и дедушки Дедушки могут получить такой отпуск, дав возможным своим детям полноценно участвовать в экономической, политической, социальной и культурных сферах жизни. Думаем, немногие государства ОБСЕ используют такой подход в своей политике по социальной поддержке женщин и мужчин. Государства-участники ОБСЕ приняли обязательства по обеспечению равных возможностей для мужчин и женщин в пяти сферах жизни – политической, общественной, экономической, социальной и культурной. Однако, хотелось бы подчеркнуть, что в плане действия ОБСЕ по гендерному равенству не отражены социальные и культурные сферы. Это, безусловно, нужно исправлять. Необходимо также учитывать особую роль женщины и матери в сохранении традиционных семейных, нравственных и религиозных культурных ценностей. Вместе с тем, стараясь обеспечить предоставление мужчинам и женщинам равных прав, нельзя забывать э, и о том, что многое еще предстоит сделать э, государством по преодолению экономического неравенства. По информации правозащитных организаций, разница в доходах мужчин и женщин в странах развитой демократии колеблется от 10 до 20 процентов. Серьезную обеспокоенность вызывают нарушения прав и дискриминация женщин, отбывающих наказание в тюрьмах. В американских СМИ появилась тревожная информация об учившихся случаях стерилизации женщин из числа заключенных в следственных изоляторах и тюрьмах в штате Калифорния. При этом, как сообщается, большая часть таких операций производится с нарушением правил, установленных для этой хирургической процедуры, а также более 30% из них без предварительного согласия пациентов. Особое внимание требуют проблемы жертв вооруженных конфликтов, среди которых наиболее страдает гражданское население, включая женщин и детей. Не можем не отметить возрастающее число украинских беженцев, основную часть которых составляют женщины и дети. Поддерживаем рекомендации старшего советника ОБСЕ по гендерным вопросам Мирослава Бахам по итогам недавнего визита на Украину. Необходимо активнее привлекать женщин к процессу стабилизации обстановки в регионе и развития национального диалога. Спасибо за внимание. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Uh, this statement is made on behalf of CSC Netherlands and LGBTI organizations in Kyrgyzstan, Kyrgyz Indigo and Labras, and Tajikistan, Equal Opportunities, and focuses on discrimination and hate crimes based on sexual orientation and gender identities, the SOGI bias. This is an urgent problem for the LGBTI women and men in Central Asia who are systematically discriminated against uh, in obtaining medical services in education, at work, and within the family. Discrimination against transgender men and women is particularly widespread in Kyrgyzstan. The Kyrgyz constitution does not explicitly include protection against discrimination on the grounds of sexual orientation and gender identity. This has allowed for Kyrgyz MPs to initiate discriminatory draft laws against LGBTI people, which criminalize the propaganda of tra non-traditional sexual relations, making it punishable by imprisonment. In Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan, hate crimes against LGBTI women and men are widespread. There is no legislation on hate crimes and no qualifying attributes for the motives of hatred, including sexual orientation and or gender identity of a person. According to the annual OSCE report, in 2012 alone, there were 15 cases of hate crimes on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity. LGBTI men and women are often subjected to violence. More than 300 cases in Kyrgyzstan alone have been reported by INGOs. As victims, LGBTI women and men are unable to resort to the police, as police officers themselves are often the source of violence and engage in practices of blackmailing and torture. 
Public authorities have created unconstitutional departments, such as the Department of Morals under the Ministry of Internal Affairs. Without mandate, they impose morality in the public sphere, targeting LGBTI men and women. And all these violations of justice take place with the tacit consent of the Ombudsman, the Parliament, and the President, who are supposed to serve as guarantors of human rights. We urge the Central Asian member states to introduce comprehensive laws and policies to protect LGBTI women and men from hate crime, violence, and discrimination, to provide legal, medical, and psychological support to victims of hate crimes, to condemn and criminalize police violence against LGBTI women and men and prosecute perpetrators, and to work together with civil society to systematically monitor cases of hate crimes, including those against LGBTI women and men. We also recommend the OCE to sensitize OSCE field staff in working on sexual orientation and gender identity issues, to support Central Asian member states in training law enforcement personnel, prosecutors, and judges to adequately respond to all forms of hate crime, and finally, to strengthen the capacity of LGBTI civil society organizations to systematically monitor hate crimes. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, the next speaker on my list is the Pavy Point Travelers Center to be followed by the Armenian Association of Women with University Education. Good afternoon. Um, Pavy Point is a non-governmental organization committed to the attainment of human rights for Irish travelers and Roma in Ireland. We welcome this opportunity to highlight some of the issues facing travel and Roma women and draw a number of recommendations for member states and the OSCE. There is very little comprehensive data on the situation of travel and Roma women in Ireland due to data not disaggregated by ethnicity. However, it is evident that travel and Roma face racism and multiple discrimination, as well as poverty and marginalisation. Pavi Point presented at the OSCE Human Dimension Implement Implementation Meeting in 2012 with regards to the position of travel and Roma women. It is important to note that the recommendations put forward have resulted in no change in policy, legislation, practice, or improvement of the situation of Roma and traveller women in Ireland. Ireland has still not recognised travellers as a minority ethnic group in Ireland. There has been no change to the habitual residence condition, which basically determines access to social protection in Ireland. Many Roma women face a number of additional difficulties to satisfy the conditions of the HRC and access any social protection even if they've been living in state for several years. This has a serious impact on women and it leaves them unable to access basic human rights as well as leaves them living in poverty and destitution. Uh, travel and Roma women have also been excluded from Ireland's current National Travel and Roma Integration Strategy. The strategy fails to include awareness of gender dimension. In addition, Roman travellers have been excluded from the development of the strategy altogether. In recent years, the traveller sector has been subjected to significant funding cuts by the state under the guise of austerity. National traveller organisations have been cut by minus 63%, traveller accommodation by 80, minus 85%, and the equality sector by minus 76%. In addition to these cuts, there has been significant underfund, underspending uh, of the allocated budgets. So we urge member states to ensure that disaggregated data according to gender and ethnicity are collected across all administrative systems. We also um, urge member states to develop adequate and effective national Roma integration strategies. Also to uphold member states' um, human rights obligations under international frameworks and ensure that human rights and gender perspectives are applied to all policy legislation and practice. We also ensure, uh, um, urge member states to equality proof all policy legislation and practice to address institutional discrimination and ensure austerity measures do not impact disproportionately on travel and Roma women. We will call for the OSCE to encourage member states to introduce disaggregated, disaggregated data collection based on ethnicity and that this takes place in line with human rights standards. We also urge OSCE to support member states to meet their obligations in relation to developing progressive national Roma strategies. In addition, to apply pressure on member states to urgently amend any policy or legislation which discrim discriminates against minority ethnic women. In addition to that, we would like the OSCE to emphasise with member states about their commitments under international human rights, uh, human rights treaties. We strongly state that recession does not negate human rights obligations and we urge for the OSCE to encourage states to take action in this regard. And finally, we urge the OSCE to apply measure, uh, pressure on the Irish state to recognise travellers as an ethnic group to ensure their protection, um, human rights protection. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much for that statement. Um, the next speaker on my list is the Armenian Association of Women with University Education to be followed by Ukraine. Уважаемые участники совещания, я должна отметить, что 10 лет тому назад я присутствовала на том совещании, где был принят гендерный план 2004 года. И должна отметить, что он был принят своевременно, и он оказал значительное влияние на изменение гендерной ситуации в Армении. Это прежде всего относится к тому, что сразу же после принятия гендерного плана правительство Армении утвердило программу продвижения женщин в систему управления и принятия решений на 2004-2010 годы. И как основа началась работа по увеличению представленности женщин во всех структурах, хотя я позже скажу, что мы больших успехов пока не имеем. Но, тем не менее, принятие вот этой программы способствовало тому, чтобы были введены определенные гендерные программы в подготовке всех структур, работников властных структур. В это же время были приняты проекты государственных гендерных образовательных программ, стандартов по ряду дисциплин для высшей школы, а также разработаны учебные пособия и учебники для общеобразовательной школы, которые способствовали изменению ситуации по отношению к положению женщин, их участию в общественно-политической жизни и восприятию гендера как социально-культурной парадигмы. Вместе с этим после этого был принят, была принята концепция государственной гендерной политики, и в 2013 году Национальное собрание утвердило закон об обеспечении равных прав и равных возможностей для мужчин и женщин. Были приняты квоты а и увеличены в последующее время до 20%. При этом должна отметить, что квота была гендерно чувствительно сформулирована не для мужчин, для женщин, а что 8, более 80% не должен быть представлен ни один пол, и в каждой пятерке 5, 5 человек должны быть представлены представители другого пола. Это позволило не ставить женщин в конце списка политических партий и увеличить представленность женщин в парламенте на 2,5%. Проведена определенная работа по изменению ситуации с представленностью женщин на уровне местного самоуправления. Я хочу подчеркнуть, что это очень важный момент, потому что я, как уже говорила на завтраке сегодня, демократические основы стали интегрироваться сверху, и низы, сельское население, женщины в сельской местности не были вовлечены в процессы демократизации страны и принятия решений. В этом году с помощью и при поддержке UNDP, ОБСЕ и Европейского Союза проведена очень большая работа, и эта работа продолжается по повышению знаний, по формированию политического лидерства женщин на селе и увеличению, с целью увеличения их представленности в органах местного самоуправления. Я хотела бы сейчас сказать насчет того, нужен ли гендерный план на последующее время, или страны, и в том числе Армения, достигли того, что гендерное равенство в той, в той или иной аспекте уже достигнуто. Мне кажется, что гендерный план очень нужен. Он нужен и потому, что страны потом будут следовать этому гендерному плану и продолжать работу по продвижению гендерного равенства. Мы должны отметить все-таки, когда мы говорим об успехах, эти успехи незначительны. Восприятие населения о гендерном равенстве все еще не достигло того, чтобы каждый человек, каждый гражданин понимал, что наличие в тех или иных структурах мужчин и женщин в, равном, в равной представленности способствует развитию страны. Гендер воспринимается как самоцель. Нередко это приписывается руководителям женских организаций. На самом деле понимание того, что гендерное равенство – это проблема вовлечения интеллектуального потенциала страны в развитие, не, не восстановлено. Сформировалось. Поэтому мы считаем, что гендерный план нужен, и более того, вот сейчас готовится мероприятие «Пекин плюс 20», мы просим ОБСЕ активизировать участие женских и других организаций. Спасибо. Спасибо. Уважаемый председатель, уважаемые участники и участницы заседания, 
Украина сегодня переживает непростые времена, поэтому поиск источников развития, оптимальное использование человеческого потенциала, преодоление всех видов неравенства, насилия и дискриминации для нашей страны – вопрос первостепенной важности. Сегодня важно создать условия для расширения участия женщин в экономической жизни и их доступа к экономическим ресурсам. К сожалению, мы все еще имеем значительный гендерный разрыв в уровне доходов от занятости мужчин и женщин. Существует сегрегация занятости по признаку пола. Законодательством Украины запрещены более 500 профессий, специальностей для женщин, что ограничивает их возможности. Мы, как и раньше, говорим об ограничении возможности профессиональной реализации и наличии гендерных стереотипов относительно распределения социальных ролей в обществе. Как следствие, среди бедного населения большинство женщин. Принятой государственной программой обеспечения равных прав и возможностей мужчин и женщин, которая принималась с учетом рекомендаций Комитета ООН по ликвидации всех форм дискриминации в отношении женщин, Предусматриваются меры, направленные на создание условий для реализации потенциала женщин в профессиональной сфере, сокращение гендерного разрыва в заработной платы. Основной акцент сделан на работодателей, на расширение возможностей работников семейными обязанностями. На законодательном уровне были урегулированы вопросы включения положений, обеспечивающие равные права и возможности женщин и мужчин в генеральные, отраслевые, территориальные соглашения и коллективные договора в случае коллективного договора нового регулирования социально-трудовых отношений. Результаты проведенного опроса показали, что с дискриминацией по признаку полу очень часто сталкиваются молодые женщины. Больше 30% опрошенных молодых женщин сталкивались с отказом в приеме на работу или уволились по причине возможного рождения ребенка, беременности или наличия маленького ребенка. Учитывая это, в Украине разработана модель реинтеграции родителей к профессиональной деятельности после возвращения из отпуска по уходу за ребенком до достижения им трехлетнего возраста. Элементами этой модели является предоставление молодым матерям возможности пройти бесплатное обучение, переподготовку или повышение квалификации, стимулирование работодателей путем дотаций принимать на работу женщин, которые выходят из отпуска и не могут найти работу с помощью службы занятости. По-прежнему чрезвычайно актуальным остается задача обеспечения гендерного соотношения уровня не меньше 30-70% представителей того или иного пола в представительских органах власти. И одной из специальных мер для улучшения ситуации в этой сфере стали изменения, внесенные в закон о политических партиях. Теперь раз, размер квот, определяющий минимальный уровень представительства женщин, должен быть не менее 30% от общего числа кандидатов в избирательных списке. Сегодня в Украине есть колоссальный ресурс общественных организаций, которые многое делают для обеспечения равных прав и возможностей женщин и мужчин, как на общегосударственном, так и на местных уровнях. Женские организации принимают активное участие в волонтерской деятельности, предоставляя всевозможную помощь женщинам и детям, которые переселились в Донецкой и Луганской областей. Мы убеждены в колоссальной роли женщин в обеспечении мира, участие женщин в переговорах по разрешению конфликтов, в миротворческих операциях будет способствовать укреплению стабильности, установлению мира и безопасности. Благодарю за внимание. Thank you very much, madam. The next speaker on my list is the United Kingdom, to be followed by the de delegation of Kyrgyzstan. So you have the floor. Thank you, madam moderator. We align ourselves with the statement made by Finland on behalf of the European Union and its member states and like to add some remarks in our national capacity. The United Kingdom is committed to tackling gender discrimination and to achieving equality at home and overseas. We are working toward a fairer society by improving equality and reducing discrimination and disadvantage for all, at work, in public and political life, and in people's life choices. But as the annotated agenda for this working session notes, despite advances being made towards gender equality, Women remain underrepresented under in public institutions in many OSCE participating states. Women's rights will never be fully realized if gender stereotypes <coughs> that limit the, limit the role of women are allowed to take hold. In the UK, there is a real public concern that stereotypes about girls 
reinforce their sense that certain activities and interests are not for them. This is clearly wrong. People should be free to develop their own interests and talents, provided they do no, no harm to others. Such stereotyping is a major factor in women's economic disadvantage and can lead to an underrepresentation of women in public office. We must work to challenge these attitudes whenever and wherever they arise. This is not about political correctness. It is about the unjustness of discriminatory attitudes, but it's also about economic reality. There is a strong <coughs> business case for encouraging women's equal participation in political and economic life. When women's opportunities are suppressed, we harm our prospects of fulfilling our full economic potential. We need to address barriers faced by women and girls we need structural change to ensure our workplaces in both public and private sectors are environments of equal opportunity. We do not claim in the UK to have all of the answers. Indeed, we recognise that we still face significant challenges in ensuring genuine equality. But one initiative that we have introduced is perhaps worthy of sharing as possible good practice. Think, Act, Report is a voluntary scheme to promote greater transparency around gender equality in the workplace. The scheme encourages companies to do exactly those things, to think about how to offer equal opportunities, to take action where a need for action is identified, and to report their progress. Over 2.2 million employers and employees are now working in organizations signed up to the scheme. Experience to date has been that this, amongst other schemes, has played an important role in ensuring that women and men are supported to make the fullest contribution that they are able. Madam Moderator, we in the UK, together with all other participating states, must recommit to gender equality in word and deed. We must ensure that abuses of women's rights and opportunities, including acts of violence, are properly and thoroughly addressed. We'd ens we should ensure that boys and men also play an active role as partners in challenging discrimination against women and girls. We welcome the Swiss Chairmanship's intention to pursue an addendum to the 2004 Action Plan on the Promotion of Gender Equality and hope that it will achieve consensus. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, the next speaker on my list is Kyrgyzstan, to be followed by the Council of Europe. Благодарю вас, госпожа модератор. Достижение гендерного равенства является одним из основных факторов устойчивого человеческого развития, в связи с чем вопрос гендерного равенства является одним из приоритетов многих государств. Принцип равноправия мужчин и женщин закреплен в Конституции Кыргызской Республики, в которой указано, что мужчины и женщины имеют равные права и свободы, равные возможности для их реализации. Реализация данной конституционной нормы обеспечивается законом Кыргызской Республики о государственных гарантиях равных прав и равных возможностей для мужчин и женщин. В Кыргызстане реализуются комплексные меры во всех сферах государственного управления по достижению паритетного положения женщин и мужчин во всех сферах жизнедеятельности общества. В целях дальнейшего прогресса в области развития гендерного равенства в 2012 году был принят долгосрочный документ «Национальная стратегия по достижению гендерного равенства до 2020 года», где были определены такие приоритеты развития, как «женщина в экономике», «образование для девочек и женщин», доступ к правосудию и политическое равноправие. Для повышения роли женщин в обеспечении мира и безопасности в 2013 году был утвержден национальный план действий по реализации резолюции 1325 Совета безопасности ООН. В целях повышения эффективности профилактики и предупреждения насилия в семье действует закон о внесении изменений и дополнения в Кодекс об административной ответственности от 2012 года ужесточающий административную ответственность за семейное насилие. В соответствии с внесенными изменениями появилась возможность налагать за совершение семейного насилия не только штраф в размере от 5 до 10 расчетных показателей, но и административный арест сроком до 5 суток. Также президентом подписан закон, предусматривающий ужесточение наказания за умыкание невест. Данным законом предусматривается увеличение минимального срока наказания от 3 до 5 лет лишения свободы, максимального от 7 до 10 лет. В Кодексе о выборах 
страны был также включен принцип двойного квотирования. При определении списка кандидатов политическая партия обязана учесть председательство не более 70% лиц одного пола. При этом разница очередности в списках кандидатов женщин и мужчин, выдвинутых от политических партий, не должна превышать трех позиций. Также расширилась представлена женщин на уровнях принятия решения. На сегодняшний день в Кыргызстане Министерство финансов, Верховный суд и Генеральную прокуратуру возглавляют женщины. Приняты такие основополагающие законы в области гендерной политики, как закон о госгарантиях обеспечения равных прав и равных возможностей для мужчин и женщин и о социально-правовой защите от насилия в семье. Также хочу проинформировать, что в мае текущего года правительством в соответствии с директивной запиской по подготовке национальных обзоров экономической и социальной комиссии для Азии Тихого океана и ООН «Женщины» был подготовлен и направлен национальный обзор по выполнению Пекинской декларации и платформы действий «Пекин плюс 20» по положению женщин. В Кыргызской республике также функционирует 13 кризисных центров, куда могут обратиться женщины, пострадавшие от насилия, и могут получить бесплатную психологическую, юридическую, конфиденциальную помощь с сопровождением медицинских учреждений. Приоритетным направлением в плане достижения гендерного равенства в стране на ближайшие пять лет будет вопрос расширения экономических и социальных прав женщин, особенно в сельской местности. Кыргызстан высоко оценивает деятельность ОБСЕ в области поддержки развития роли женщин во всех сферах жизнедеятельности страны и считаем необходимым активизировать совместные усилия между странами ОБСЕ по дальнейшему улучшению гендерного равенства. Спасибо за внимание. Thank you very much. The next speaker on my list is the Council of Europe, to be followed by France. Madam Moderator, uh, gender equality means a lot. Gender, gender equality means uh, an equal visibility, empowerment, responsibility, participation of men and women in public and private life. It means also equal access and distribution of resources between men and women. Uh, gender equality is central to the protection of human rights, democracy, and rule of law. In order to accelerate the progress towards gender equality, in 2013, the Council of Europe Committee of Ministers of the Council of Europe adopted the a gender equality strategy for the period 2014-2017. The strategy focuses on five objectives, combating gender stereotypes and sexism, preventing and combating violence against women, guaranteeing equal access of women to justice, achieving balanced participation uh, <coughs> of men and women in political and public decision making, and finally achieving gender mainstreaming in all policies. The Council of Europe Gender Equality Commission is at the center of this effort. The Council of Europe uh, Gender Equality Standards are based on uh, European Convention on Human Rights, mainly on the pro uh, Article 14 on Prohibition of Discrimination, Protocol 7, Article 5, Equality between Spouses, Protocol 12, Article 1, general prohibition of discrimination, and also on different treaties, the revised European Social Charter, as well as Convention on Action Against Trafficking in Human Beings, and Istanbul Convention on Preventing and Combating Violence Against Women and Domestic Violence. On August 1st, the Istanbul Convention entered into force with 14 ratification. Uh, the Convention, um, is a very important tool, will contribute to, the, uh, to ending all forms of violence against women like forced abortion, sterilization, forced marriages, and it should lead to increased investigation, prosecution, conviction of perpetrators of violence. But uh, I would like also mention a very important field of interest and policy of the Council of Europe, which is uh, uh, combating discrimination on the grounds of sexual orientation or gender identity. 
on 31st March 2010, the Committee of Ministers uh, adopted recommendation to member states on this issue. Uh, the recommendation sets out principle based on the jurisprudence of the European Court and promotes tolerance towards LGBT persons and ensure that, ensure that victims have access to legal remedies. In 2014, Intersecretariat Task Force on this issue was established by the Secretary General with the main objective of mainstreaming sexual orientation and gender uh, issues in the work of whole organization. Uh, let me mm, uh, mention uh, uh, some, let's say, uh, recommendation which uh, uh, is very important to make the Council of Europe policy real. I think that uh, there are uh, two um, legal texts which are very important and which should be implemented uh, by the member states, first ratified and implemented, which is Istanbul Con Convention, but also Protocol 12. Uh, to the European Convention on uh, Human Rights. And of course, uh, recommendations uh, of the Committee of Ministers, which makes this policy uh, addressed to men and women, uh, women very real and very powerful. But it takes quite a long time, and I do hope that we will witness one day that this um, very wide uh, catalogue of standards will be fully implemented into the policy of member states. Thank you very much, madam. Um, the next speaker on my list is France, to be followed by Switzerland. France. Merci. Je souscris pleinement à la déclaration de l'Union européenne. La France n'est pas épargnée par les inégalités de fait entre les femmes et les hommes, bien que la loi les combatte très strictement. D'importants efforts ont été déployés récemment pour mettre fin à ces inégalités de fait. Après les droits civiques reconnus en France en 1944, après les droits économiques et sociaux acquis dans les années 70 et 80, il s'agit de définir les droits porteurs d'égalité réelle. La loi du 4 août 2014 sur l'égalité réelle entre l'homme et la femme s'attaque ainsi aux inégalités hommes-femmes partout où elles se manifestent encore. Travail, foyer, séparation, violence, responsabilité. Et vise à rendre effective l'égalité des droits affirmée depuis longtemps dans les textes en levant un à un les obstacles qu'elles persistent à rencontrer dans les faits. Au niveau international, Nous portons plus particulièrement nos efforts sur trois objectifs majeurs. Les droits éducatifs et politiques des petites filles et des femmes. La protection contre les violences. Les droits sexuels et reproductifs. La mise en œuvre des droits sexuels et reproductifs adoptés dans le cadre des grandes conférences onusiennes dans les années 1990 est essentiel à l'autonomisation des femmes et à la lutte contre les violences sexuelles. Ils permettent aux femmes de décider librement et avec discernement du nombre de leurs enfants et du moment et de l'espacement de leur naissance, de disposer des informations et moyens nécessaires pour se faire et de prendre les décisions en matière de procréation sans être exposées à la discrimination, à la coercition ou à la violence. Par ailleurs, la France a accueilli en juin 2014 le Sommet mondial des femmes afin de faire progresser le leadership des femmes dans le monde économique. Ce sommet permet chaque année à des personnalités du monde entier, travaillant dans les domaines politiques et économiques, de se rencontrer et d'échanger sur des stratégies permettant aux femmes d'être au cœur des décisions de demain. Nous appelons l'OSCE à poursuivre ses efforts pour une pleine mise en œuvre du plan d'action sur l'égalité de genre, à renforcer l'accès universel aux droits des femmes, et à prendre les mesures nécessaires pour permettre leur autonomisation dans tous les domaines. Merci. Thank you very much, sir. Um, the next speaker is Switzerland, to be followed by Canada. Sir, yes. Danke, Frau Vorsitzende. Dieses Jahr wird der OSCD-Aktionsplan zur Förderung der Gleichstellung von Frauen und Männern 
zehn Jahre alt. Im Einklang mit unseren Prioritäten hat die Schweiz ihren Vorsitz genützt, um zusammen mit dem Sekretariat und dem ODIR die erste Gender Equality Review Conference zu organisieren, an der Teilnehmerstaaten und die Zivilgesellschaften die Errungenschaften des letzten Jahrzehnts Revue passieren haben lassen und neue Ideen zur verstärkten Umsetzung unserer Verpflichtungen zur Förderung und dem Schutz von Frauenrechten ausgearbeitet haben. Als Vorsitz arbeiten wir eng mit dem oder mit der Sonderbeauftragten, der Senior Advisor für Gleichstellung Fragen und mit dem ODIR zusammen und haben in diesem Jahr darauf hingearbeitet, dass Koordination und Zusammenarbeit zwischen den drei genannten Stellen optimiert wird. Gemeinsame Berichterstattung im Ausschuss der menschlichen Dimension, ein gemeinsamer Länderbesuch schon letztes Jahr in der Schweiz und in diesem Jahr in Albanien und nicht zuletzt der enge Einbezug aller drei Akteure in der Vorbereitung der Genderkonferenz Zeugen von diesem Vorhaben. Es sind gerade die Schlussfolgerungen aus der Konferenz im Juli, welche unsere Beobachtungen der letzten Jahre bestätigen, dass mehr getan werden muss, aber zum Glück auch mehr getan werden kann. Verbesserungspotenzial gibt es in allen drei Dimensionen, insbesondere aber auch in Bezug auf den institutionellen Rahmen, in dem die OSCD agiert. Es ist Zeit, bestehende Kräfte zu bünden, um künftig mit geeinter und starker Stimme für die Sache der Geschlechtergleichstellung einzustehen. Von den Worten der Teilnehmerstaaten an der Konferenz im Juli getragen, unterbreitet der Vorsitz dem Ministerrat in Basel ein Addendum zum Aktionplan 2004, welches ein aktualisiertes Toolkit liefert, um die Gleichstellung zwischen Frauen und Männern weiter zu fördern. Wir gehen mit, dem, mit den Teilnehmern der Gender Conference einig, dass Gender Mainstreaming auf alle Entscheidungsebenen durchschlagen muss. Die bestehende Gender Section soll deshalb künftig direkt dem Generalsekretär unterstellt und auf Direktorsebene in die Entscheidungsfindung einbezogen würde. Außerdem soll der Leitung dieser Einheit das nötige politische Gewicht verliehen werden, indem sie vom Vorsitz und Sonderbeauftragten ernannt werden wird, welche Länderbesuche unternimmt und zur Einhaltung der Verpflichtung mahnt. Ferner enthält das Addendum neue Verpflichtungen zur Bekämpfung der Gewalt gegen Frauen und Mädchen. Die Schweiz ist sich bewusst, dass es sich bei dem Ministerbeschluss um ein ambitiöses Ziel handelt. Gleichzeitig ist die Förderung von Frauenrechten und Gleichstellung eine außenpolitische Priorität für unser Land. Wir haben eine Chance dieses Jahr das Profil unserer Organisation für die Gleichstellung der Geschlechter zu schärfen und unsere Verpflichtungen den gegenwärtigen Bedürfnisse anzupassen. Wir fördern alle Teilnehmerstaaten, auf diese Chance auf, am Schopf zu packen. Vielen Dank. Vielen Dank für diese Erklärung. Um, the next speaker is Canada to be followed by the Public Foundation Answer. Canada. You have the floor. Merci, Madame la Modératrice. L'égalité entre les femmes et les hommes, l'autonomisation des femmes et des filles, incluant la protection et la promotion de leurs droits, sont au cœur des politiques et des programmes du Canada. Nous appuyons les efforts déployés par l'OSCE pour s'assurer que les droits des femmes et des filles sont respectés et pleinement intégrés dans son travail. À cet égard, le plan d'action 2004 de l'OSCE pour la promotion de l'égalité entre les sexes est un outil important pour promouvoir l'égalité au sein de l'organisation et dans chacun des États membres. Que ce soit au secrétariat, au sein des institutions ou dans le cadre des opérations sur le terrain, les activités, les projets, les programmes et les politiques de l'OSCE devraient assurer le leadership et la participation pleine et entière des femmes dans toutes les structures et tous les processus décisionnels. 
Comme l'a déclaré le ministre des Affaires étrangères, John Baird, lors de la tenue du sommet mondial de Londres pour mettre au, euh, fin aux violences sexuelles lors des conflits, il ne suffit pas que les femmes soient dans la pièce, elles doivent être à la table d'honneur. Voilà pourquoi le Canada s'est réjoui de l'annonce faite l'année dernière par le secrétaire général, Zanier, qui déclarait que les femmes occupaient maintenant le tiers des postes de direction de l'OSCE, ce qui représente un sommet jamais atteint jusqu'ici. Même si cela témoigne de progrès, nous notons que des déséquilibres structurels subsistent entre les différentes parties de l'OSCE et que ces déséquilibres, souvent, reflètent l'état des choses au sein des États membres eux-mêmes. Le Canada pilote la résolution annuelle au Conseil des droits de l'homme sur l'élimination de la violence contre les femmes. La résolution de 2014 porte sur le thème de la violence faite aux femmes comme obstacle à leur autonomisation économique et politique. Nous en dirons davantage sur la façon de lutter contre la violence et la discrimination à l'égard des femmes dans le cadre des discussions spéciales de demain, mais nous pouvons d'ores et déjà affirmer que l'égalité, l'autonomisation, la dignité et la liberté ne seront pas des réalités tant et si longtemps que le cycle de la violence et de la discrimination ne sera pas brisé. Une meilleure ventilation des données et des indicateurs que nous obtenons pourrait nous aider à cerner ces problèmes et à nous y attaquer. Ce faisant, nous pourrions non seulement identifier les obstacles particuliers auxquels se heurtent les femmes et les filles, mais nous pourrions aussi développer des solutions appropriées. Madame la modératrice, certaines personnes se demandent pourquoi un organisme de sécurité comme l'OSCE devrait consacrer du temps et des ressources à la promotion de l'égalité entre les femmes et les hommes. La réponse à cette question est simple. Nous pouvons constater de manière fiable que les États les plus prospères sont ceux où les femmes sont pleinement impliquées dans le processus de prise de décision. Le respect et la promotion des droits des femmes et des filles, leur égalité et leur autonomisation sont des vecteurs essentiels de la démocratie, de la prospérité économique, du développement durable et, au bout du compte, d'une sécurité accrue pour tous les citoyens, hommes et femmes, des États membres de l'OSCE. Madame la modératrice, les recommandations du Canada sont les suivantes. Pour l'OSCE et ses institutions, veillez à ce que les droits des femmes et des filles soient protégés et encouragés et qu'ils soient pleinement intégrés dans leur travail. Deuxièmement, pour les États participants de l'OSCE, prendre conscience des inégalités qui perdurent entre les femmes et les hommes et adopter les mesures qui s'imposent pour faire face à ces obstacles. Je vous remercie. Thank you very much, sir. Um, the next speaker is the Public Foundation answer to be followed by ICLA, International Civil Liberties Alliance. Добрый день, уважаемые участники.